Hello, I'm Andy Rash, technical trainer for DMAG Cranes and Components. In this video, I want to introduce the audience to basic ADAPSI and its use for troubleshooting CAN bus control DR Pro cranes and hoists. You must begin with purchase of a basic ADAPSI license set, which includes a hardware kit to plug a laptop computer into the crane system using a 9-pin serial plug and plugging it into the lower right-hand corner of the control board. I have power turned off for the crane system while I'm plugging in this plug. It is in the lower right-hand corner of the board. There are two plugs on modular boards and one on single boards. To start the site diagnosis procedure, we're plugged in to the system and to our laptop we have the ADAPSI screen open. We will use the open file to get this box in the center. We must create a file name. That makes sense for the download we're about to make. I would use an end user name, or crane serial number, or something that helps you identify the file later if it's in a list. For today, I'm in the DMAC Training Center. So I'm going to call this DMAG, and then I'm going to add the date, and then skip a space and put the number of the download. This is my first attempt, so I'll use number one. Once I say OK, it takes me to the main screen that allows me to control the download, but I must select on the left side between a rope hoist and a chain hoist. And this is a crane with a rope hoist. Now notice, once I do that selection, now the toolbar with icons lights up. And I now have access to make a CAN bus connection using the interface by clicking the CAN with the green squiggly arrow under it for CAN connect. Then, DR with the downward arrow for doing a download from the crane. A status bar comes on in the center of the screen and the bottom right hand corner shows a green status on the CAN plate. It is reading all of the hoist and bridge panel on a crane during this time frame. In our case, our system is set up with two hoist and a bridge by expanding this list, I can see that I have a bridge download beginning with 06 and two hoists with serial numbers that should match their serial number that's on their outer label. I can select them and we will pick this hoist that ends with serial number 4211. Now the download has filled a lot of the file folders here I'll expand those. The most important file folder is operating data. This gives us our cycle counters and our hour counter. And anything I want to know more information about, I can click with my cursor on it and I get information and help screens at the bottom explaining information about it. If a wrench symbol were visible in the display, the background of the counter value that's causing the wrench symbol to come on will be in red instead of green. So we can quickly diagnose which switch gear has triggered the wrench symbol and is approaching its theoretical life. Also, it's important to note the hour counter here so we can compare it to the timestamp on error codes. The system also gives us the last 16 error codes. The numerical symbol for the error code is given and its timestamp against the operated clock. To know what error 50 is, there's a help screen at the bottom that I can scroll and get a brief description of the error code. In this case, the last one in history was an error 50. Error 2 was an error 17. There's another video 
in our series of videos that specifically discusses error 17. Another error 17, and so forth. And error 31 affecting the monitoring of the hoist brake. So here we can study a trend and make some diagnostic assumptions on what we need to go and work on or check on the physical equipment. The other folder that's important to look at is statistics. Statistics actually tracks recorded overloads that happened to the system. It also records how many times the brake has allowed over travel beyond limits. So if the brake adjustment were ignored on the hoist, eventually you will trigger a statistic of one in this box, and it will trigger the wrench symbol, and it will only operate the hoist in low speed when that happens. Any of the counter values in operating data or statistic values shown in the statistics folder can be reset using a function under the service button. A simple checklist. So every time new boards or new electronic gear or switches are added to the crane or hoist, the corresponding counters should be set back to zero. Basic ADAPSI allows this and gives you the predictive maintenance ability of having the counter. This has been ignored for many years on a lot of the equipment so that the counter values really are not useful for predictive maintenance. In most of those cases, it's because when the equipment was changed, no one had a basic adapsy to plug in and zero the corresponding counters and do this service reset. We will have a future video detailing how to do the service reset. For now, I'll cancel out of that and show you that there's also a service access history so when downloads are made, it records who made those downloads and any parameter change that was made. We've just completed the download and examination of the key folders, the operated data folder, the statistics folder, and the error history folder. And I've shown the service reset. These are the most beneficial areas of basic ADAPSI that can help everyone with troubleshooting and with maintenance. I will now turn off the Canvas connection using the icon at the top toolbar and then it allows me to exit out using the red X in the left corner. It takes me back to the home screen. In the next video we'll examine service reset in more detail.